and welcome to Cardinal Parish Church on this the 2nd of June for our service of Holy Communion. Pardon us. 
and the eternal life. Now if you'd like to start with the glory, please. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. 
So we lay clothes on him. Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. <coughs> the Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. <coughs> then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And now we're going to say again, and the hymn is, Be still and know that I am God. Hey, the word. 
words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Very basic, isn't it? Particularly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wasn't it lovely to hear the glorious song this morning? I'm great when we have the choir out. And um, of course, we have an extra member, an old face there in our choir this morning. Very much welcome to you. Thank you, Norma. Um, I'm very grateful to Sharon for coming to the service this morning. So in our reading from Mark, we witness Jesus challenging the legalistic interpretations of the Sabbath laws that were held by the Pharisees. The scene unfolds as Jesus and his disciples walk through a field on the Sabbath and they're plucking the heads of the grain to eat. And this action incites the criticism of the Pharisees, who accuse them of breaking the Sabbath laws. And Jesus responds by citing the example of David and his companions eating the consecrated bread, and he does this to highlight the principle of mercy over ritual. Mercy over ritual. On top of this, Jesus encounters a man with a withered hand, in the synagogue on that Sabbath day. And despite knowing the Pharisees are watching him and waiting for him to put a foot wrong to break the law, he heals the man. And if he'd waited until the next day, it would have been fine. But he broke one of their religious practices. And when challenged, instead of showing remorse, he challenged the religious leaders, questioning their customs. But you know, we shouldn't read this passage today thinking that Jesus is questioning the traditions of Judaism. Jesus is raising questions which challenge the traditional customs and practices of us all. Neither should we think this gives us carte blanche to do whatever we want on the Sabbath or any day. Jesus is challenging legalism, ritualism, Laws and words which are set in stone and give no thought to compassion and love for our fellow man. As you know, we have other Wednesday evening been exploring other kids and we've had visits to various places and one of which was the synagogue. And like all denominations, the Jewish tradition has different levels of devotion and custom. And the Summerton Road Synagogue, the chap told us, would be more strict in their adherence to the law. And you probably know that, similar to the law in Jesus' time, no work should be done on the Sabbath, which is a Saturday for them. And in the past, this would have included not getting a bus, you know, the preparation of food, anything which could be interpreted as work. And I was really surprised that this even included opening up of the building on a Sabbath morning. A, a Gentile would be employed to do that. And the simple act of turning a key in a door was considered as work, or putting the heating on as considered as work. And the gentleman who was telling us about the thing, he, he recalled with humour a, a story when the janitor was ill at the last minute and couldn't come to open up and they had a visiting rabbi. And they had to devise a complicated way to insert and turn the key that wouldn't infringe on any of their laws. And we ourselves adhere to the same law in the Ten Commandments. The Fourth Commandment, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labour and do all your work. But the seventh is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In, in it you shall do no work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Do we adhere to this commandment? Jesus 
tells us that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. What does that even mean? Just look back to when you were a child. Well, if you're my age or older, you weren't allowed to do anything on a Sunday. You went to Sunday school in the, in the morning, in the church in the morning, probably Sunday school in the afternoon, maybe some other wee uh, mission hall or something at the evening. And when the era of television arrived, now I'm giving the age away here, but not, when the era of television arrived, there was no television on a Sunday. You weren't allowed out to play. As for shopping, we'll never go shops open and in. Nowadays, well, yes, I watch television on Sunday, and yes, I help people go to shop, always looking over my shoulder to see if there's anyone seeing me or watching. <laughs> and I do have to tell you a funny story. I popped into Mark's, it was an emergency, on a Sunday after a service, and who was in front of me in the queue but Cameron Bailey? <laughs> And I challenged him. I said, What are you doing shopping on a Sunday? And he said, It's my heavy off. And then he caught himself on and he looked strict and he said, I am here to catch you out. <laughs> I think that adhering to the Sabbath was ingrained in, in my generation, so I always feel a bit uncomfortable about doing things on, on a Sunday that could have been done on another day. Jesus summed up all of the law and the teachings in one command, and that was to love one another. I want you to close your eyes just for a minute and picture this scene. I'm just going to read part of the lesson to you again. Chapter 3, verses, uh, verse 5. He looked around them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts. Feel the emotion in this passage. You know, the word distress, Jesus was deeply distressed at that. They were hardened hearts. And they, they couldn't feel a hungry person on a Sabbath. He couldn't pain a man without breaking the law on a Sabbath. And he must have felt very distressed at the man in front of him, too, with the widowed hand. But he, he, he just said, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out. And it was cold. You know, Jesus loves these people. He loves all these people. He loves the people that were persecuting him. He loves the people that were putting him to death. And it troubles his heart that they are so hard. So he looks at the man standing in front of him and he's filled with compassion. Not only for the man, but as I say, for all those watching the heart and hearts who don't understand. He was angry with them, but desperately distressed. The words of Ecclesiastes came to mind for me there. It's a time for everything under the sun. Jesus is not saying the law is all wrong. These laws were made in the first place to help people, to protect the vulnerable, the slave, the humble taken. The Pharisees saw obedience to the law as an end in itself. And so they were angry that Jesus exalted the importance of love and compassion above their cherished rules and regulations. Of course, it put them down in their mind as well. They seriously believed that they were the, these rules were the way to please God. You had to keep these rules to please God. They didn't understand any other way. And this man, this young man, Jesus, who knew a lot and was very learned and informed, here he was questioning everything they believed, everything which they adhered to. And so they plotted to destroy him. They honestly believed that the only thing to do was to kill him. To kill somebody for the crime of transgressing their spiritual values. And sadly, we still see the same beliefs uh, in some of the really fundamental religious beliefs today. We've seen it even in our own history, haven't we? Um, Catholics killing Protestants, Protestants killing Catholics, Jews 
are Palestinians, Muslims and Hindus. It doesn't really matter what the reason is. We always find something to justify our mistrust or hatred of people who do things differently or who, who are not like us. Our own way of doing things becomes more important than anything else. And the commandment to love is far less important than preserving things the way that we like them. You might ask, well what about the commandment thou shalt not kill? That is why we have to have a good reason for killing Jesus. And transgressing the laws of God, insulting God by healing on the Sabbath, by picking grain to eat, that was heresy. That was breaking the laws of God. If we read this passage and condemn the Pharisees, then we also condemn ourselves on those occasions when we allow our customs and our practices to become more important than the command to love one another. We condemn ourselves when we allow our sincerely and honestly held religious beliefs to become more important than loving our neighbour, which is much more difficult. What if God is calling us to step outside of that safe zone and see the needs of those around us and how we are called to serve them? We need to remind ourselves today that the Pharisees never invented the Sabbath. It was given to them by God as a special, a special gift, a special way for a people who toiled in slavery to have a rest day. Jesus was not against the Sabbath. It was created for humankind to enjoy, to rest. He just pointed out that sometimes there is a greater need, as when King David ate the bread that only the priest was supposed to eat. We have abandoned very much strict Sabbath days now, with all rules and regulations. But we would do well to consider some of the benefits of taking time to rest. We all benefit from having time to rest, to think, and to pray. God does not want you to drag yourself into the ground. And when he created the world, even God had a day off. Jesus challenged the prevailing custom and the expectation of the Sabbath in his day. Perhaps today one response for us might be to challenge the prevailing expectations of our materialistic culture. Let's judge his success in terms of financial gain rather than relationships to one another, rather than relationship to God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we feel your compassion and we feel your pain. Give us hearts and courage to challenge those things we know are wrong. Give us hearts to serve you as we stand alongside our neighbour in love. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We believe in one man.
response to the prayer is to now say, Lord, in your mercy, responses hear our prayer, and then we'll all join at the end in merciful Father. So let us pray. God of glory, King of kings, we thank you for today. Help us to waste none of today is ours and to miss no opportunities. Thank you for the gifts you've given us. Help us to use them to further your kingdom on earth. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, we confess we have not always followed your word. There are times when we follow our own desires, an angry text, hit the button and send it too quickly, spoken a harsh word of judgment and said it, all too late to take back. We have allowed pride to get the better of us. We ask for your forgiveness. And we thank you for humbling us and letting us start afresh. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. <clears throat> Almighty God, we pray for people living in fear today. Anxious and worried because someone they love is in pain. Those who are sad because a loved one has died. Those who feel lonely, those going through hospital treatments, those worried about finances. Surround them with your spirit of wisdom, your healing, and your life giving peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God. You hold all creation in your hands. Our broken world cries out to you. A world dominated by wars and disasters. We pray for Ukraine and Russia. For Gaza and Israel. And for our own diocese. We pray for all those suffering from hate crimes and those that commit them. We ask for tolerance in all societies, for light and for darkness. Open our hearts that, your, that you, the great I am, can fill us with your wisdom, your strength and your compassion. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And we pray together, merciful Father. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we continue in prayer as we say together the prayer of humble access. We do not presume. Sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and 
reconciled us to God and one Father. By the cross we meet in his name and share his peace. Allow us to offer each other a sign of peace.
even when we turn away from you, you never cease to care for us. As in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. The night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this all of you, and this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion together. We celebrate his resurrection and we do the coming of the King. Accept through him our great high priest. This our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life giving spirit we may be made one in your holy church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever. Savior Christ has told us we are bold to say our Father. <coughs> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And the grace of God is in thy name.
looking at the kids are eating on sheets, um, which is not too many houses. Um, if you've got any pastoral needs before Thursday, you can get in touch with Carol. Um, on Monday the 3rd of June, we'll have a social morning at 7.30pm. And the best few meets on Tuesday the 4th at 1030 Sorry, at 7.30pm. I'm sorry, that morning we have a sloppy morning. That's Tuesday the 4th of June at 10.30am. On Thursday the 6th, we have our midday prayer, and that's at 12.15. Um, for those who have been attending um, the other faiths course, you can notice um, it's been changed to Thursday this week. It's usually on Wednesday evening. It's this Thursday, and it's to seek God for I hope that's how you pronounce it. Um, but I don't think there's any six in here, you can tell me what I And that's on Thursday night in our body we have Also on Thursday evening, <coughs> for you who maybe don't attend um, the other kids' course, there is a gathering of its lagging camera. It's an informal end of season recital. And that's followed by refreshments, and that's at 7 30 in the church. And um, the details are on your sheet. And also, this coming Saturday, that's the 8th of June, at 10 a.m., we have a work party, and that meets at 10 a.m. And after that afternoon, at 4 30, join <coughs> this meeting. So, all you ladies that have never been before, you're more than welcome. I think that's everything. You just can have a wee look at sure when you just get home and go through everything in detail. And now we're going to sing again our final hymn over a thousand tons to sing.
Thank you for joining us this morning at Carnmoney Parish Church. Our thanks go to our first reader, Robert Campbell, our second reader, John Fenton, Sharon Ferguson, who led our service, our preacher, Carol Harvey, our organist, David Rutherford. We look forward to seeing you again next Sunday for our service of morning prayer.